Yes, boys, welcome back to the channel. Today, I'll be reacting to the fights that were just announced for UFC Saudi Arabia. Hamzad Shemaev taking on Robert Whittaker for the number one contender uh, position in the middleweight division. Really looking forward to these fights, man. We have... Hamza Chimaev taking on Robert Whittaker. We have Pavlovich taking on Volkov. Uh, we have Johnny Walker taking on Volkan Ustamir. Shara Butin Magomedov taking on Ihor Pretoria. Calvin Gaslam taking on uh, Daniel Rodriguez. This is the shit we love, ladies and gentlemen. This is why the UFC is the best. It, it's just the best thing in the world, really. I mean, I don't know, bro. This shit is so fire, man. The way these, the way they just bring out these banger matchups on a on a Wednesday at 4 a.m. <laughs> 4 a.m. for me right now. I just, I literally got up, got up out of my bed and decided, let me react to some of these fights. Let me break down some of these fights ahead you know, pretty early on. This is before, you know, I've watched any tape. Maybe my predictions may, uh, you know, change. But wow, these matchups are going to be absolute bangers. Hamza Chimaev taking on Robert Whittaker. Let me break this fight down. Robert Whittaker, you know, he looked really good in his last fight against Paulo Costa. That was one, that was probably the best Paulo Costa we've ever seen. Yes, you know, the Yoel Romero uh you know, Paulo Costa looked amazing as well, but I feel like that was the best Paulo Costa we've ever seen. Almost, almost KO'd Robert Whittaker in that first round. Robert Whittaker, man, this guy has some of the best defensive wrestling you will ever see. Yes, he got head and arms through by DDP, which isn't the best look, but you know, the fights, the wars he had against uh, Yoel Romero in there at, you know, two fights that they had, went to war over over 10 rounds, and, you know, Robert Whittaker was able to get some get get the best off the wrestling exchanges in some parts uh, in those, you know, fights, and I feel like, you know, if Rob Whittaker is able to keep this on the feet and kind of just, you know, outmaneuver uh, and uh, uses movement on the outside, uses blitz style on the outside against Hamza Chimaev, he might actually li light up Hamza Chimaev on the feet. But honestly, man, I feel like Hamza Chimaev's pressure relentlessness early on, I think he's going to clip Robert Whittaker and put him out, man. I do. I think that Hamza Chimaev, man, I, I just, I think... Robert Whittaker gets hurt, gets hurt in the fight eventually, and I just, I can't rely on Robert Whittaker's chin against a guy that's going to put on the pressure, a guy that's going to put on, you know, the relentless, you know, takedown threat, or like Hamza Chimaev, I just feel like Hamza Chimaev is going to march him down and eventually land one of those big right hands, uh, like he kind of did against, you know, Gerald Mearshaw, I'm not going to, I'm not saying he's going to go over there and just KO, uh, you know, Robert Whittaker in 17 seconds, obviously he's not going to do that, but uh, I just feel like, you know, Hamza Chimaev's pressure, he might be able to, you know, get on the inside of Robert Whittaker, and Robert Whittaker is hittable, yes, he's kind of hard to hit, but when he hit him, man, you know, he doesn't like to be hit, and you can kind of tell by that, every time he's hit cleanly he doesn't react well and I feel like you cannot be taking shots against uh, on, against a guy like Hamza Chimaev so I feel like Hamza Chimaev is going to be able to put on that pressure uh, you know put on that relent just that relentless wrestling pace uh, potentially on Robert Whittaker and find a uh, KO in the first round I do believe you know I actually said that Usman could actually win this fight I bet Usman against Robert Whittaker or against uh, sorry Hamza Chimaev their last fight so you know, I was, I was kind of, I, I feel like a lot of people will be picking Robert Whittaker, but I, I just, I feel like I can't rely on Whittaker to just evade every single big strike, and that's kind of what you're relying on, in my opinion. I, I'm just not high on the Whittaker chin, even though I picked him, bet, bet on him against Paulo Costa. That was kind of just me fading Paulo Costa because I wasn't really high on him. I'm kind of higher on him now after that performance he showed against, uh, you know, Robert Whittaker. But, yeah, I think that Hamza Shemaev's going to be able to land that big right hand and put uh, Robert Whittaker away in the first round. I just, I can't rely on Robert Whittaker to avo uh, avoid every single strike that Hamza Shemaev throws. But if it gets to the first round, man, I think Hamza Shemaev could be in big trouble. No real head movement uh, at, at all. He literally doesn't move his head whatsoever. Very, very open to straight shots. That just a straight... Just straight shots down the pipe, and you know I could see Rob Whittaker survive on that first round, and then potentially winning a decision in this matchup. Don't really see him, you know, finishing Hamza Chimaev if he has a granite chin. So yeah, it could be decision victory, or it could be a late stoppage. It is a five rounder, so that will definitely uh, benefit Rob Whittaker as well in this uh, in that matchup. And then the next for the night is gonna be an absolute heavyweight banger, ladies and gentlemen. I, I posted. Well, well, let me actually check this. I posted on Twitter. Unpopular opinion. 
mean, if they made this fight, it was a picture of Volkov and Pavlovich. This was two weeks ago. I said, unpopular opinion, if they made this fight, I would pick I would pick uh, Volkov to beat Pavlovich. His kicking ability, which Pav has struggled with in the past, would destroy him. And I'm going to stick by that. I'm going to stick by that. I think that, I don't, I don't think I have to watch tape for this man. I'm really good at heavyweight, uh, I'm really good at predicting heavyweight fights. I have a very good, uh, you know, betting record on heavyweight fights of 42% ROI, but for you guys that don't understand betting, it basically is just very high, it's very good, uh, you know, money return if you bet, if you bet the fights that I pick, so, yeah, um, I, I do, I have a very good read on Pavlovich, I bet him against Curtis Blades, I bet him against, uh, Derek Lewis as an underdog, bet him against Ty, I think I parlayed him against Ty, he was like minus 200 in that fight, I bet on him, um, first blades at like plus 120 and then I bet against him with Tom Aspinall so I do have a very good read on Pavlovich I feel and I think that his kicking defense is very poor man the the way I found this out was kind of watching that blades fight I watched that blades fight and I was very like hmm, this guy does not check leg kicks whatsoever and he doesn't react well to getting kicked and I was like saying Aspinall is going to chew this guy's leg apart and you know early on in the fight you seen like Aspinall on like two big leg kicks and Pavlovich didn't even react to them and I feel like on the outside I feel like Volkov, uh, Volkov has this guy, I, I, has him in big trouble, if Volkov can uh, avoid all those big bombs, the big combinations, the boxy combinations that Pavlovich throws early on, I think Volkov pieces him up and puts it on him, uh, you know, end of the first round and definitely get someone out there in the second round. So I feel like Volkov on the outside with his teeth kicks up the middle, with his leg kicks, uh, with his just overall kicking ability and reach, I think he's going to be able to use that in this matchup. I just like the variety he has on the feet. I think Volkov's very underrated, man, I think. Um, I, I just really like him on the outside in this matchup. You know, Pavlovich, like I said, has struggled with guys that do kick him. And I think that Volkov can put it on him from the outside uh, with the deep kicks, with the leg kicks. And yeah, I like Volkov in that matchup for sure. But yeah, we cannot uh, break down this fight forever. What's the next fight? I just like went off. Okay, it is Johnny Walker taking on Volkov, uh, Vulcan Ustimir. This is another banger, man. I actually met Johnny Walker uh, at UFC Bellator Bell or UFC Bellator, uh, Bellator Belfast, gee, it's like 4am boy, sorry, I'm like, my brain is absolutely cooked right now, but yeah, Bellator Belfast, and dude, that guy's absolutely humongous, it took me a while to like realize, I tried getting a picture with him, but I was like, uh, I, I had to like take like 10 seconds and be like, is that him, because he, he has like a full beard now, which was like weird to see like a full like, um, just an entire beard, so yeah, I don't know why that's why I'm bringing that up to you. Um, Vol Volkan Ustamir taking on Johnny Walker. I think that Johnny Walker wins this fight, man. I think that on the outside, I favor Johnny Walker with a power advantage. I favor Johnny Walker. I think that Volkan Ustamir is very hittable, doesn't have the best chin, and I think that Johnny Walker is very, uh, you know, good on the ground as well. If Volkan Ustamir takes him down there, I think the Vol uh, that Johnny Walker is dangerous off his back, as we've seen against Iwan Kudalaba. Yes, Iwan Kudalaba isn't the best fighter, but I wouldn't say, you know, Volkan Ustamir has, you know, insanely good BJJ or grappling on top, so I think that Johnny Walker, you know, can win this fight, uh, pretty, pretty, uh, you know, spectacularly, to be honest, I think that he has the reach to cause Volkan Ustamir problems, he doesn't have a long reach whatsoever, I think that Johnny Walker on the outside is going to have the longer strikes, the more powerful strikes from the outside, and I think that the different variety of strikes that he throws is going to be a big problem for Volkan Ustamir, so I do like Johnny Walker in this fight, I do like him to get this points back victory at UFC Saudi Arabia, very, very, the Looking very forward to that fight, man. These fights that the uh, UFC have put on, this is, this is why MMA is the best, man. I mean, no sport compares to it, man. Wednesday, 4.43 a.m. <laughs> or Thursday for me. Uh, Wednesday for some of you Americans right now. But yeah, this is why the UFC is just amazing, man. I love this. I, I don't know what my life would be <laughs> all like this. Shit would be so boring, I'll be honest. But yeah, uh, Shara Buddha Magomedov taking on Ihor Puteria. Shara Buddha, man, this guy is, this guy's fun, this guy is very wild, I mean, he's a wild man, <laughs> this guy is legit a wild man, beating up people in malls in, uh, what was, Dagestan for kissing his, uh, he beat up a guy because he uh, kissed his girlfriend in public, he, he was not happy with that, Shara Buddha Magomedov was having none of it, and this guy was out for blood, this guy was out for blood, and he knocked that fly cold, 
Uh, the funny thing is, he, they. So here's. I'll play it right. My I'll play it right from what I remember from the clip I seen. So Shahrukh Putin was just minding his own business, going down an escalator. He was in a, in a mall in Dagestan. This man and woman. You know, it's obviously different over there with the culture and stuff. This man and woman kissed each other, and Shara Biden was not happy. You know, you know, for obvious reasons over in that kind of part of the world, and Shara Biden squared up to him, and he was like, "Yo, you cannot be doing that, bro." And the guy, you know, uh, started grappling him, and he was like mulling him. He was like ragdolling him around. Shara Biden was getting <laughs> ragdolled by some random dude in public, and then uh, they got split up. Shara Biden went outside and then waited for the guy to come outside. He knocked him out cold and stomped on his head. <laughs> Oh my god, this guy's a weirdo, but, you know, fair enough, I mean, gotta respect it, I guess, but, yeah, Shara but him, you know, in his last fight against Bruno Silva, you know, his take on defense, man, yeah, 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 his take on defense was horrible, but his striking, man, his kicking ability on the outside is nasty, and we knew that this guy can take a shot on the chin, as we've seen in that Bruno Silva fight, man, he was getting hit with some big shots early on, and, you know, Shara, uh, Shara but it was just able to outlast him, able to outcard him, Cardio with him, uh, able to like, damage him on the feet, and even on bottom, man, he had some nasty elbows on bottom, which I love to see from fighters, man, you keep inflicting damage, keep racking up those points, which was good to see, but his take on defense, man, and his get-up game did not look very good, but in this matchup against Ihor Pateria, man, I don't think that's going to be a problem f uh, for him whatsoever, I think the Ihor Pateria... This guy's a guy that's going to come forward, a guy that's going to march you down and try and land some big hooks on you from the inside. I think that Ihor de Pretoria is going to be outmatched on the feet, man. I think that Ihor de Pretoria from the outside, on the outside, sorry, is just going to get blasted with leg kicks, blasted with high kicks, blasted with body kicks, and I think that Ihor de Pretoria could, uh, you know, probably get finished in this match. Oh, I, yeah, there's no way this goes to decision. There's no way. I actually bet Ihor de Pretoria's last fight, uh, who did he fight, actually? Let me look this up. Ihor, it was against some Polish student making his UFC debut. Uh, Ihor de Pretoria was the underdog in that fight. Uh, let me see. One sec, guys. It was against Robert uh, Berzak. I actually bet that fight to go to decision at plus 600 and it cashed. So I was very happy with that play that I bet on. But yeah, uh, this fight's going to be an absolute war, ladies and gentlemen. This fight's going to be an absolute banger. Fight doesn't go the distance. Parlay it up. Parlay Shara Putin and Maggie Madoff up on this card because he's going to absolutely just... I, I think he's going to make this look... Actually, I don't think he'll make this look easy, man. I, f I think that this fight could be very, like, if you have, like, if you're going to bat Shara Bin, you're going to be like, oh, my gosh, please stop, you know, brawling with this guy. But I think he's going to be able to outlast him, like, cardio him and, like, damage him. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah, I think he has a very good chin. And I just, I, I don't know. I think he is going to be a good parlay piece, you know, to bat in. But I, I <laughs> it's going to be a very risky fight for sure because Ihor Pretoria cracks. He's going to be a big guy in there. He actually will be so much bigger, actually, thinking about it. Ihor Pretoria has moved down from 205 to 185. And it's not like Shara Budin is a big, big 185 either so yeah that's a very interesting fight probably will go with Shara Bitten from uh you know range to use his kicks and stuff his flashy kicks uh and then our last fight that was announced it was Kelvin Gaston will be taking on Daniel Rodriguez uh I think the Kelvin Gaston should win this fight ladies and gentlemen I mean well I don't really see how he's gonna be able to lose this fight you know as we've seen in Daniel Rodriguez's last few fights he hasn't looked the best he's looked he definitely is on the decline and I think that Kelvin Gaston this is kind of his prime now this is what we'll the, the best we'll see of Kelvin Gaston and I think on the feet here he'll have the better kicks from range with the leg kicks he'll have the cl uh, the cleaner boxing I think he's more durable I think he's got better cardio, and I just think he's going to be able to, you know, put it on Daniel Rodriguez for all three rounds and win this fight by decision, or maybe a TKO win, as we've seen, you know, Daniel Rodriguez isn't really the, uh, you know, the most durable guy from what we've seen in his last few fights, and I just think that Daniel Rodriguez is definitely on the decline from what we've seen in his past two fights against two, or three fights, it was against uh, Neil Magny, Ian Machado Gary, and who else was it? I can't remember, or maybe that was just the last two fights he had, but yeah, you know what I mean, you know, Kelvin Gaston in his last fight against Sean Brady, I mean, he got wrestled to death, you know, grappled to death, so, you know, it's not something that Daniel Rodriguez has in his arsenal whatsoever, so, I think that Kelvin Gaston should be able to go out here and make this, like, pretty, pretty easy, in my opinion, maybe 30-27, maybe find a finish later on when, uh, you know, Daniel Rodriguez is kind of gassed out, so, gonna go with Kelvin Gaston to get that victory in a UFC Saudi Arabia uh, for his first welterweight win in how many years would it have been? 
like 10 years he's, he moved up in like 2015 to welterweight or middle middleweight so yeah that, that'll be a very good bounce back win for him and you know he'll, he'll have some momentum to move up the rankings because i i feel like you know moving down and finding a guy like sean brady was a bit of a bit of a, the wrong call in my opinion i think he needed a tune-up fight like this to you know make, make his way into the top 15 the top 20 at welterweight so this is definitely a better fight for him and yeah he should be looking for someone up the rankings after this fight but yeah guys there you have it there was my reactions to all the fights that dana white just announced a matter of minutes ago uh if you didn't like this video hit the subscribe button hit the like button comment your predictions or whatever down in the comments below it helps the algor algorithm out and i'll try and respond to every comment possible guys but yeah really looking forward to this ufc saudi arabia car these fight nights have been absolutely terrible this year so it's finally good to have a good uh it's finally nice sorry to have a good fight night event uh, and yeah really looking forward to ufc saudi arabia oh it's gonna be so long though two months away i think april may no it's th uh, three well no it's like two and a half uh, at this point because we're almost in uh, april so yeah really looking forward to this event hope you guys enjoyed this video i will see you in the next one for my best bets video on friday have a good day peace